Welcome, Superboy fans. It's been a minute. And <laughs> welcome to Superboy the Legacy Podcast. I'm your host, Sam Rizzo. And on this episode, we will give you our picks for the worst episodes of season two of Superboy the TV series. But before, please help me welcome in my co host, AKA Team Superboy, Tom Gallagher, David Arroyo, and Chris Jacobson. How's it going, guys? How's it going, guys? Hey. Hey, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> so. We have a bunch of stuff to get to today. Uh, first off the bat, let's do a little bit of news uh, roundup. Uh, I've known for a while that Alon Mitchell Smith, a.k.a. Andy McAllister, will be making his first ever super appearance. He has never done anything Superboy related uh, to promote the series. He's been to a number of cons, but it's always been about weird science or chocolate wars. So... He is going to the Superman celebration July 30th to August 1st. He will be there. I'm going to be there. I've thrown my hat into the Q&A panel hosting hat there. So we'll see if they allow me to host the panel. I've done panels for them before. I did Stacey Hyduk and uh, Diane Cherry Case from Superman the Movie. That was a fantastic panel. Had so much fun. Uh, when you're in front of everybody and it's all that energy coming at you, it's a lot of fun and it, it's all Superman and Superboy questions. So it was, it was a blast, but yeah, he will be there July 30th to August 1st. He will be signing autographs Friday and Saturday, and there's going to be a Q and a either on Friday or Saturday in the Metro tent. So look forward to that. That's going to be later on the summer. I'm going to be there. Uh, we're developing some limited prints that will be at the Superman Museum. So look for that information coming up very, very soon. Cool. So. Very cool. Awesome. I look forward to seeing the video. Like, it's, yeah. it's all going to be filmed. Like, We'll have to upload it to the YouTube channel so people at home can watch. And Yeah, yeah I'm going to try to see watching. I'm going to try to see if I could do a live stream if I host the panel. We could that just live great. stream it. That would be great. Yeah. Right from the Metro tent. Cool. Um, yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, secondly, yesterday, the beautiful Stacy Hyduk was at Wizard World Virtual Events doing a nostalgia series, uh, signature series. So let me pull that up real quick. Uh, so, fans, if you go to wizardworld.com, you can get. Um, message from stacy you could get an autograph from stacy let me see if i could pull that up the information sorry guys it's been a while <laughs> so <laughs> there it is uh wizard world signature series presents nostalgia uh stacy hyduk from soap stars what is it soap stars daytime tv past and present days of our lives superboy which you can see right there Prison Break, she was on The X-Files. She's done so much work. We hope to have her on the podcast very, very soon. And yeah, you if you go to Wizard World, you could still purchase, you could uh, record it messages, autographs. Um, there's a bunch of stuff up there. So just go to wizardworld.com, type in Wizard World Signature Series, uh, Soap Stars, and there it is. Cool. Whew. A lot of stuff in the news today. <laughs> it's a shame that Stacy didn't do more outside of the pilot episode of Heroes because that show was so huge for a while. Like, yeah. yeah. That I that always... would have been on the list had she been in more than just the pilot. She would have been a great villain on the series. That would have been fantastic. For the first season. Kind yeah. of wasted time yeah. after that. But yeah. 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 <laughs> like I could totally see her working with HGR that first season with the the company. That would have been amazing. Like her in charge of the company. That would have been well, awesome. she she was a cop, so maybe it was she could have been like an agent of the company, like implanted within local police to look out for these things. Like, well, I mean, there's there so have, many projects. It's, there's so many projects Stacy was in that should have gone longer or should have expanded more. And sadly, they didn't. So, right. You know, you know. Yeah. Kindred the, the embrace. Oh uh, yeah, Kindred <laughs> embraced. <laughs> 
uh, her role on Sequest. Yeah. <laughs> I've covered many of these roles so mm-hmm. on my show. So JoeBlow.com. If you haven't, go to JoeBlow.com. Gone but not forgotten. Go check it out. He, Dave did a, the first episode right out of the gate with Superboy. So go check it out. Definitely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you guys want to get into the worst picks of season two. Yeah. Let's get into the worst picks. Should we go um, in order that they like, appeared in the show? Yeah, that's fine. We'll do that. Yeah, yeah sure. Easy. So who's up who, first? Who's, Mine was, who was first? My episode was later on in the se- season, like towards the end. I have no I guess, idea. Like, in the middle. Was it in the middle? Think- I think mine was like right at the end. <laughs> Chris, you go first because I think yours was closer to the beginning. Okay, so I chose Superboy's Deadly Touch. Okay, now I have mixed emotions about this episode. I mean, this is this is a great episode, and yet it's a it's a pretty much a dog of an episode. Okay, well, what, what was the episode about for our audience members that have never seen that episode? Before? Okay, so basic, basically, basically. <laughs> <exist. laughs> Luthor uses a device that he's hidden in a stolen school bus to supercharge Superboy with solar energy. And what it does is it's causing him to lose control of his powers. They're growing exponentially. And of course, he's generating tremendous amounts of heat from his body. So he's becoming not just a menace to himself, but to everything and everyone around him. Yeah, that, that that on the face of it, sounds brilliant. Yeah, it sounds brilliant. Yeah, and and it, was writ- <laughs> it was written by Mark Jones and Carrie Bates, but like their previous work together from season one, and Tom, you remember we did a t- commentary on this, Succubus. Yeah. Great idea, great moments, but it falls flat. And there are, and I'm gonna go through a couple of the reasons why. And there's also a really creepy moment in the episode. In the nuns. <laughs> the nuns making out yeah that's a little creepy <laughs> Wait, well no no it, it, n- no not they're that. kissing they kissed oh yeah. okay yeah okay Sorry first how does superboy not recognize luther that's as a nun? that's the first moment this is not just after he has the the facial reconstruction to make himself look like warren eckworth mm-hmm. okay all lex is doing is wearing a nun's habit a full nun's habit and a pair of glasses yeah Darla's not even got glasses, so he no, should recognize no. her face. No, but here's, the, here's but she the thing. did make a convincing nun, which he did. He didn't. never met Darla in her first appearances. Mm-hmm. Oh, he never met her, so that's why he doesn't recognize her. But how he could not recognize Lex when he's standing no more than two feet away from him is yeah. beyond me. Okay. <laughs> So that's that's problem number one with the episode. Lex is just it's not really like he put actor. on some, some latex makeup and then as soon as soon as Superboy got supercharged, he just does, does the whole Mission Impossible thing and rips it off. And then you realize it's Lex, okay? He's standing two feet away from him and he still doesn't recognize. I mean, if it was me, I would have been standing there saying, Lex, why are you in drag? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First that of all, would... Lex Lex is an Ethan Hunt. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess it's just a rule in the DC universe that if someone takes off their glasses or puts glasses on, they become unrecognizable. So yeah. I, I, I guess I, it's I guess. set up in the rules. Yeah. If okay. Clark can maybe, do it, maybe, Lex can. maybe Darla, maybe since he never met Darla, it kind of threw him off. And yeah. you know, that's why he was like, uh, I mean, he kind of looks like Lex, but Lex doesn't have a person that's with him all the time. You know, mm-hmm. and just maybe that kind of throw him off. I don't know. Yeah, but it's it's still one of those 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 moments. You know, where you're supposed to suspend disbelief, but it's kind of reaching. Okay, so next we have the moment when he fl- when he wakes up. He goes to the to the uh, to the actual benefit where the nun where the real nuns are. He finds out that the bus was stolen, and that there was no nuns there. So that should have been the first clue. Okay, what the heck's going on? Something odd here. And then, of course, you have the moments where he flies off and the nuns see that he's leaving burned footprints behind. Cool effect, but 
nobody's getting worried about this at that moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then he finally arrives at the hot dog stand for lunch with uh, Andy and Lana. Okay? I hated that scene. That scene is bad for a couple of reasons. All right. Having them have lunch at a hot dog stand, okay, you could see it, you know. But what he says to Andy and Lana is Ugh. the problem. Mm -hmm. When he says, oh, well, I'm sorry I'm late, guys. I, I just found this, this amazing bug for my bug collection, and I had to catch it. Yeah. Okay. They use that joke again in a later in another episode. <laughs> yeah, which... I think it, I think it was in uh, Rest in Peace, which Sam, I think yep. you're going to get into that one. Exactly. I, I was going to get into that one, but I picked another episode. All right. You did? I did. Yeah. I'll tell you what it is in a minute. Okay. In a minute. <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. <laughs> I get that they were trying to accentuate the nerdiness with him for this season, but. There's a way they could have done it without being so over the top Steve Urkel nerdy. Mm -hmm. yeah. All he would have had to say is, "Oh guys, hey, sorry, I'm sorry I'm late. I was I was at the library and I lost track of time studying." Mm -hmm. Still Perfect. puts across the idea that he's a nerd or nerdy. Mm -hmm. And it kind of covers his his pr pr proverbial keister as to why he was not there. Plus it's just a great reason for the character. I mean, he is a college student. It's yeah. bound to happen. Yeah. And later on in the scene, you know, when, when the, the police cars are rolling around and he says, Oh, I'm not feeling good, guys. I gotta I gotta go. That makes more sense. You know, yeah. he's not feeling well. That's not nerdiness, that's mm -hmm. that's just him using an excuse. I wonder if like Lana or Andy ever actually asked to see Clark's bug collection because like Clark and Andy <laughs> live together, so if, if Clark's got a whole bunch of bugs somewhere, like Andy should not, probably know about it. <laughs> yeah, and of course Andy's Andy's reaction of "Is he serious?" It's almost like he's saying, "Wait a minute, what bug collection? I don't remember a bug collection in our 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 dorm." Yeah. Mike then was he has the game of soda and it starts bubbling like you know <laughs> boiling and stuff and then he just puts it back down where anybody could reach it to yeah. go after robbers and i'm like you know this hot dog stand person might have just like gone like oh somebody left ah! dirt the yeah. burns on his hands you mm. know and stuff Ugh. yeah i mean there are certain moments of that that scene scene that are good i mean yeah seeing the 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 the, the drink bubbling over okay great great effect there should have taken but, it with him yeah, or evaporated, <laughs> or yeah, yeah or yeah. just tossed it in the trash can that's standing right there. Or even like, I tell you why he didn't do that cool. because they yeah. needed it for another take. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, mustard in that trash can. It's a hot dog stand. <laughs> Back yeah. to one. Back to one. Yeah. <laughs> we only have one soda. That's all we have. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then of course him running off to chase after the robbers, and his shirt completely falls apart. I, I like no, that. Nobody shot, else like can that. see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like the scene too, but it's like somebody should only, have seen. Yeah, he's only a couple of feet away from Andy and Lana when he's running, and his shirt is just falling apart. That happens a lot, though. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. but I, I always think of like with John, like he takes. That bit with the skateboard. He he gets on the skateboard, kicks it twice, and then rips off his shirt and flies away. Why did he need the skateboard? He he traveled about, I don't know, yeah. three foot. Yeah. <laughs> it was totally an 80s thing. We gotta yeah. you know, we gotta put him on a skateboard. Yeah. Back to the future did it. We gotta put Clark Kent on a skateboard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's then definitely we... why they did the Hollywood episode as well. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> then we get to uh the chasing of the, of the crooks. Now, of course, he overshoots them because he has no control over his super speed and flight. Mm -hmm. Great effect. Yeah. I think you can agree uh, with me on that, Dave. You yeah. know, I mean, good concept. I don't know about the effect. The effect when he lands. Now, that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, the, the 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 small crater in the sand and yeah. the, and the explosion of sand mm -hmm. around him. That's great. And then him blowing the blowing the car with his super breath, and it flips over. Which I think they then later use that sequence in a later version of the uh, the credits. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great show. Yeah. And then, and then you got you got the cop coming over, and Superboy starting to realize that he's out of control, and. 
The cop putting his hands up says, Whoa, I can feel the heat. Don't touch me. But the thing that made it so funny, though, was that Superboy is shouting, like, don't touch me, I'll burn you. And the yeah. first thing the cop does is, like, get his hands and, like, go to touch him. And it's like, yeah. I, so Superboy always, has to shout again, don't touch me, I will burn you. Like, I, yeah. I always thought it'd be cool, since his powers are going haywire, that if he, when he screamed, don't touch me, like, it would be like a bomb going off. And you hear, like, people, like, they're going, like, you know, like Super that. And, shout, they can't, yeah. and they can't hear, yeah. you know, and stuff, because it's like, you know, that's... Kind of like sound, you know, after yeah. explosion. I thought well, that would wouldn't be cool. Have, it wouldn't have taken much money to pull that off as well. Like just some mm -hmm. stock footage, just birds suddenly flying away from some from some trees with like echoey sound. So yeah. it costs nothing. Or like the glass cracking, like on the police officer's vehicle or something like yeah. that, or blow blowing out the the glass. The, amount, the mm -hmm. amount of fake glass yeah. that they break in this show, they could have spared some. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, and then we and then we get to the to you know him being uh, in the little laboratory with Professor Peterson. Okay, mm -hmm. and you know what, George Chakiris, as always, is perfect as Peterson here. He's mm -hmm. doing his level best to try and keep Superboy calm because he realizes that his emotions are part of the problem here, and they're they're causing him to, you know, you know, go haywire. When Lex breaks into the the facility. And he says, Lex Luthor was here. This is a missed opportunity. All Peterson and any scientist that he would have worked with, you know, Superboy, would have had to say is, Luthor, he was here? Let me call security. Yeah. Missed he, opportunity. I, I'm surprised you didn't catch this. Um, he's wearing a robe over the hazmat suit. You didn't, I mean, I thought that was a stupid part, you know? Oh, yeah. He's, I, I didn't, I, I, I was trying to block that out. Yeah, no, he was wearing a robe underneath the hat on top of the hazmat suit, which is like, really? You know, like seriously? Well, they just called him uh, on the trailer. He forgot to take the robe off. What the hell? <laughs> it's like, you know, why? I, I what the Mm -hmm. and it of is course, a very Silver Age comic book thing to do, though. I mean, true, yeah, true. It's also, also very it, vain. Even, even into the two thousands, though, Spider Man would have like Spider Man would have this disguise where he would have to go into like an asylum, and so they don't recognize him. He would put on a trench coat and a hat, but he'd still be wearing the full Spider Man mask, yeah. just walking through. Nobody yeah. says a word. But and of course, what books. I what I <laughs> the 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 really dark, creepy moment. Okay. It occurs just before this, when Lex is he comes down into into the laboratory. Well, oh, his, his, I think you know going to, yeah. Comes down the stairs and there's a skull there. He pats it on the set and says, "Hello, Leo." Okay, I thought that was that's awesome. Awesome, yeah. but I it's love also that. creepy because that means that after Leo's body was collected by the police, he broke into the morgue, mm -hmm. decapitated the body. Mm -hmm. And then stripped all the skin and muscle and tissue off the skull so he could keep it as a trophy like he's, you know, the Bawana hunter. Fr well, he could know. have also just dug up the grave and then it would have been decomposed it's so much. It's still really, really creepy. Poor Michael Mann. I love that. I, I, I love I that. Can definitely, <laughs> I can definitely see Sherman Howard's Lex mm -hmm. like, like having the decapitated head and just dunking it mm -hmm. in like a barrel full of acid. And it just pulls up like a perfect skull. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I loved it. I thought that was freaking awesome because it's it, like you go, he it's is awesome, nuts. but it, it's it's just it's just really creepy, you know, mm -hmm. to know that he and it was established in a season one episode that Leo had family. So yeah. mm -hmm. poor Leo. Yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of dark. At least at least you can say to Michael Mano <laughs> that his character stuck around for a few more episodes. Yeah, you yeah, did. exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Technically and, Leo's there. Yeah. I, I liked it. I don't know. I love that part. But I know. love it too. It has its moment, you know, when when they have to go to the governor to to because the Lex has made a deal that you know he'll cure Superboy, but he has to get a full pardon. Okay, typical Luthor, you know, thinking of himself. And then we get we get to this moment. The bus pulls up. Superboy flies in, and then he does this whole little joking, menacing thing where he says, "Here, shake." And Lex is freaking out because he doesn't know that Superboy's been cured by mm -hmm. Peterson. And then Superboy chases after him. 
catches him, and then we find out that it isn't Lex, it's a robot. Yeah. So why does he care about shaking the hand? That's true, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Unless he was trying to... Yeah, no, exactly. It doesn't work in any way. Yeah. No. yeah. If uh, he's going to yeah. run and be discovered anyway, yeah. The only way that would have worked is if Lex was in charge of the robot with like some kind of power glove and headset, mm -hmm. you know, a VR setup where he would have felt everything the robot felt. Okay. And why would he do that? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I mean, it's a very silver age kind of thing, you know, it's, it's yeah. a very silver age kind of thing of like, you know, the evil scientist gets caught and it turns out to be a robot, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Stupid. I like to think that Lex <laughs> created an entire like artificial intelligence of himself, like he did in um, season four. Being like a well, Doctor I, Doom kind of thing. Yeah. Like it's it's a perfect download of his mind into a yeah. robot. Maybe it's well, like the I first think, stage. I think of a lot of a later. lot of that comes from this episode. You know, I mean, it establishes he can build realistic robots of himself. So. Yeah. Yeah, Dematisse remembered probably remembered this from from the from this episode and said, you know what, let's do that for for uh, know thine enemy. Yeah, you know. But as much as I like the episode, I can't like it because there's so many plot holes here. I mean, for crying out loud, L Lana and Andy come to the laboratory where Superboy are, and not once does either of them mention, "Have you seen Clark?" And it's only been what a day. Yeah. I mean, but Clark is forgettable. I mean, that's his disguise. He's a forgettable guy, you know. Who, for, who so. forgets the weird bug catching kid? Like, yeah. <laughs> who forgets so, so, that kid? Right. I'm not letting but him also, out. Of my it's been a, but, okay, but it's been a day, you know, and he's been shown as being absent minded, late, you know, and stuff. So they may just be thinking he's somewhere in the library. He must probably fall asleep in the library somewhere, you know. So, yeah. or. Or been on a bug hunt, you know, or something, you know. But uh, yeah, no, I see. I see the problems with this episode. What's funny is that they've done this this type of setup many times in the comic books. I remember growing up uh, in the '90s, there was an episode like this where he became this hulking like creature. Um, there was an episode of Justice League Unlimited where he had this nightmare. That that's what happened to him, and he killed Jimmy and he killed Lois yeah. um, by accident. Um, and even All Star Superman, the movie, the animated movie, uh, basically that's what it was. You know, he he got overcharged. You know, yeah. So I thought I don't know, I I thought that was a solid premise. I didn't have that much of a problem with it. Um, although I will say this though, I was amazed by special effects in this movie, uh, particularly Dollar's hair. Um, Darla's hair was insane. You know, like it was crazy. You know, I've never seen. I've never seen that before in my life. You know, if if you guys are gonna watch this episode, just watch it for that one scene with them on the bed and him scaring her with a spider. Because you'll go multiple scarings with the spider. <laughs> yeah, I think they kind of drove that joke to the ground a bit. You know, there. You know, I, um, I like some comedy where they do it once and it shouldn't be funny the second time, but because mm -hmm. the the character doing it is a psychopath, it is funny mm -hmm. the second time because it's like, of course yeah. he's going to do it again. I just think they <laughs> use the wrong scream. They, I think they use the type, the sound effect as the wrong scream. It could have been a different scream. I don't know. I guess yeah. it's because I make a show and so I'm always doing sound clips so right. I can tell, and I worked in radio for a while too, so I can tell when a sound doesn't really match uh, yeah. the clip and stuff. So I felt like this, the, 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 my big problem was the, with this, was a scream off where she was like off camera and the scream they used Cause they use like a, like a blood curling. She's being murdered scream when it could have just been a, you know, a yelp instead, you know? Well, yeah. so. I'll tell you what I would have done with it. Like for an extra bit of comedy. Just like mm -hmm. have her start to scream, but then hear a thump and you hear Lex go, ow. And it was because Dala, if, if he did that twice, she she would definitely thump him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and then she uses the same joke on him later on, just before he goes to the uh, to the the laboratory. Yeah, yeah. Well, com comedy comes in threes, isn't isn't that the rule? Mm. Comedy yeah, some... and death. <laughs> the Hitchcock rule, yeah, mm. three times. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like I was saying, you know, they've used this this formula before. This the same. Um, set up before. Um, I, I don't know, man. I, I didn't think it was as bad, you know, as you thought it was. Um, I thought it was, it was a decent episode. It was very corny, 
you know, very, um, especially the mittens that he had to wear uh, yeah. with that and stupid the helmet. helmet and, and the, the stupid helmet, helmet yeah. you know, <laughs> which actually, ironically, they used a, a helmet for Supergirl in the Supergirl TV show when she had to go supernova and basically just use as much super, you know, um, heat vision as she could to like power something, something like that. I forgot. But, you know, um, I mean, you know, I, uh, the, the props were, were, were stupid, not as bad as in Sam's original pick, uh, Superboy rest in peace, but yeah, the helmet was stupid. We could clear it, clearly tell that was either uh paper mache, you know, and, um, duct tape, you know, the, the yeah, that's why were, it was lit so darkly, so you couldn't really yeah, tell. Yeah, yeah, but you could you could not hide the mittens. The mittens you could not hide. You know, yeah. so this is also why so few Superboy props seem to turn up because there probably was a lot of paper mache ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was, wearing, I, he was I wearing kitten mittens. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I forget, guys. How was it that he cured himself again? It was uh, what, Professor what was Peterson again? figured out that by using plutonium rods, like they would in a oh, yeah. reactor, they yeah. were able to drain the excess energy off yeah. of him. That's the the problem I had with the episode. You, you didn't show him being cured. Right. You know, you didn't show him being cured. It was just like going like, oh, we'll do this. And then cut to the governor scene. And I remember, and I, that was a problem I had with the episode, which is like going like, wait a minute, you're going to cut the climax of the episode and go straight to the epilogue? You know, like, well, what? Dave, I, I can understand why they would cut that. First off, mm -hmm. you know, to try and do something like that in special effects at that time on cheap. On the cheap budget that they had, yeah. okay. And second, it the way Peterson is putting it, you know, when he says it, we have to try it. I'm not sure if it's going to work, but we have to try it. And then when he shows up, still having the helmet and the mittens on, mm -hmm. we think, okay, it didn't work. And then we find out it did work. It was kind of like you know, um, a surprise that it mm -hmm. actually worked. Mm -hmm. So it works. That that part works if you look at it that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. I get your point. Mm -hmm. The episode is not as it not as good as it it could be. And and Tom and I have discussed this before. You know, the problem is execution. You know, there's so many corny or really off the wall bad moments in this that it just it just takes it down from what it could be to what it turned out to be, mm -hmm. which is yeah. well. That seems what, what we needed was a scene like in Wrath of Khan when Spock dies, like in the radiation chamber. Like, have him go into this room and maybe it weakens him for a minute, but I mean, then, like it, then it cuts to him in the suit <laughs> later. Yeah, or like that scene in Adventures of Superman where he got frozen. Well, yeah. I mean, they could have well, they could have did like a, to be a power type plant of thing. in. Just just find a random power plant in Florida and just say, we, can we just shoot for five minutes? We just need him walking into this room looking weak and then we'll cut away. See, anyway. here, here's a good way to do it, right? Um, you put him in that radiation chamber, like like Tom said, and then you have him start to you know collapse and then you start having the scientists go like, we got to get him out of there, we got to get him out of there and stuff. And then, then you cut to the governors, yeah. you know, and then that would be a better transition. That'd I be think. great. Yeah, that would have been and a better transition. It doesn't even have to be a big room because look at how yeah. David Tennant's doctor died died in right. Doctor Who. Like he oh. was in this very small room that was being pumped full of radiation. I yeah. can't stand that episode, but it just shows that you can do it on a smaller scale. That probably mm -hmm. didn't cost them very much. It's just like plexiglass, mm -hmm. clear plexiglass box. That's all it was. Yeah. Like, and like in today's day and age of television, you would start with Superboy walking into that chamber and then mm -hmm. cut to your your intro. Like yeah. that would be a great teaser. Like oh, he's yeah. dying, we got to get him into the chamber, and then yeah. start the show. Mm -hmm. That would have been cool. But uh, yeah. is there anything else you want to say about this episode, Superboy's Deadly Touch? Before we move on to the next episode, um, that you're gonna cover? I was just gonna reiterate. Nuns kissing is disturbing. Nuns kissing. <laughs> well, they actually... weren't nuns. It was a guy in drag kissing a, a, a woman in, in a nun. Still, night. it's still even that. It's still like a little, you know, icky, you know. But of stuff, all so. things to dress up as a nun, like I mean, it makes sense. Though. The most, the most evil person 
dresses up as a nun is so funny. Darla, you know, Darla was here, pretty here's how they could have done that, that was, moment yeah. and it not be so creepy. Not have Lex dressed up as a nun, have him dressed as a priest with a wig <laughs> and a goatee, a fake goatee, and then maybe some glasses. Then he would have been more, oh, gee, that's not Lex. That's just a priest. Well, that's so 2000s, Chris. This is 1989. <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> you got to think of just, the style back then, you know. So just, just thank your lucky stars that he wasn't dressed up as one of the kids. <laughs> just just <laughs> sitting there with a giant lollipop, <laughs> a windmill hat on. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I, I just I laugh at the line, come on, give us a kiss. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I do like his one laugh where he just goes, ha, like that, you know. Yeah. That was I like that. I don't know I, why. I love the I line like too. That. When he wakes up, he's gonna wish he was dead. Yeah, I love yeah. that line. That's a great line. Great line. And the way yeah. Sherman de- delivers these lines is just fantastic. So it's, just, well, it's weird because people keep comparing it to the Joker, but I'm going like that's I just, I mean I guess, but like I just don't see that much of a comparison to him because he's technically he is coherent, you know, and stuff. It's not like he'll you know change in a drop of a dime and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, there is a certain parallels, but I just always saw him as a more Silver Age uh, Lex Luthor, you know. Yeah, not, the, yeah. the He's crazy scientist. Silver. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. the earliest version of Lex is a mad scientist, and that's exactly mm-hmm. what he is. Yeah. I have thought of a really dumb joke about why Clark can get away from with just disappearing. Because okay. he's a bug, because he's a bug catcher, people are afraid that if they make eye contact with him, he'll challenge them to a battle. I mean, the only thing I would say is like worse than that would be an Erex collection, which I think they're using Family Matters. But like, ugh. But yeah. then doesn't he say he has a rock collection too? He 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 has a rock collection. He has a shell collection. We see in Nightmare <laughs> Island, he he's collecting shells. This? See, this is why episode. this is why I hate season two, Clark, because it, yeah. it's just it's it just doesn't stupid. make sense. Yeah, it it's makes, just stupid. No, yeah. The, Either, you know, Andy, they, Either there's like a closet in their dorm room that Andy just never opens that's full of shells and bugs and just really just random shit. <laughs> or Andy is just the biggest dumb, dumbass in the history of the world. I mean, he's <laughs> so self-centered. Uh, he's so self-centered. Yeah, that's true. I wouldn't, yeah. yeah. He probably wouldn't pick up on it, actually. Yeah. Well, Andy's always going on dates, so he doesn't have time to, to see what <laughs> Clark's doing. So, you know, yeah. he's got mm-hmm. his own, like, business stuff going on. <laughs> He's out there making his dodgy t-shirts and shit. (laughs) So uh, let's move on to the next episode. Uh, Tom, you want to go? Sure. Um, I've actually forgotten what my episode was now. (laughs) Casanova. Casanova. Johnny Casanova. Oh, Johnny Casanova. Okay. Okay. I kind of cheated because I do. This is a guilty pleasure episode for me. I really enjoy it, even though it's objectively one of the worst episodes of the show. (laughs) It's not good. The script is terrible and makes no sense at all. Like the only thing that really saves it is the actor that plays Johnny Casanova when he's transformed is just Mm -hmm. brilliant to watch. Mm -hmm. Mark Holt. It's just yeah, the Pee Wee movie. Pee Wee's yeah, Yeah. Pee Wee's yeah. He's just so great to watch. It's so much fun just to see his performance and seeing Stacy's performance as she acts like she's completely just in love with him. And it's just, it's a really fun episode. That's mm-hmm. it shouldn't it shouldn't be as much fun as it is. I'm not. It's kind of an. I, I don't understand why I enjoy it so much, but I do. Isn't this one that that Ilya wrote? Yes. Oh, that makes so much sense that, now. That really does. <laughs> that makes that so much sense now. He, so, he by the way, guys, if you guys don't... In, mm-hmm. He turns from a handsome if, guy into an Ilya Salkind lookalike. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, here, for guys who haven't... For people that haven't seen the episode, the episode is about this very good-looking guy, but he's very boring. And his brother... Uh, and he's always being blown up by Lana. Like, Lana just goes, like, I don't know why. It's just, he's He's boring you know and stuff and so he comes home his brother's been shot his brother's dying his brother gives him this potion this serum that he goes like it'll change your life blah blah dies um after his brother's arms yeah in his brother's arms after the funeral he takes this potion and turns from his you know 
good looking 1980s guy mm -hmm. into a schlop, you know, and then suddenly for some reason people fall in love or are charmed by this guy who's a slob, you know, and hence the premise of the, of the, yeah. Uh, and and, and the, the other thing is that the, the actual guy's last name is Avanasak, which is Casanova backwards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the only one who picks up on this when when, he, Clark. when the cousin the cousin mm -hmm. introduces himself as Johnny Casanova is Clark because he's writing it down and it's like hmm yeah <laughs> it doesn't show why he suddenly thinks to do that either it's yeah. just randomly he just decided I'm gonna write this guy's last name backwards I wonder if that would yeah but why yeah. why would he even think to to try that but yeah. there are some there are some really funny moments in this like, i love the mob boss who's got the really deep voice mm -hmm. he sounds kind of like the uh, the professor guy from sliders for some yeah. reason he's got like the yeah. same voice john reese uh, yeah he's like he tells his hitmen like like to kill him he's like but come on he, he seems like a really like a great guy like we, we want to yeah, go uh, maybe for a couple of beers says, and just, yeah, i want to play cards I want to yeah. play cards and smoke cigars with them. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. I was just thinking, I love. I, I so love when fun. Clark and Andy are at the nightclub, and Andy's like, "No, no, no wait, we got a date for you, Clark." Yeah, <laughs> it's great. But and she's, see, all, she's she's nerdy and all over him like a cheap suit, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's freaking out. Yeah, but see, yeah. here's the thing. It actually it's quite. It's quite quite clever because it's a great looking guy who's dull turning into a slob who's very charming, you know. Yeah. Basically saying that, you know, uh looks don't count is the uh it's uh it's your personality and stuff, right? Right. Um which is Except something it wasn't that... really his personality, it was what the proportion was doing to him. Exactly. Radiating waves of, you know, charm. Exactly. But like I think the the metaphor is is that, you know. And stuff. And to be honest with you, they handle it pretty well for a kid's show because any other show, even back then, would have gone a little bit kind of like on the uh, yeah. side, you know, because yeah. he, he didn't even kiss Lana at any point in this, you no. know? No. I wonder if it's kind of a, like, a metaphor for like alcoholism. Like, you think that you're super charming after you oh, yeah. too many <laughs> drinks, mm -hmm. but actually, you just you look kind of like a slob. And yeah. it's like, I wonder if like Elias Salkind was like, I don't know, I don't know if maybe he wanted to quit drinking or something, or he just no, didn't like I alcohol just, in general. I think, but I think it was my theory. I think that that's that was his stand of like, you know, well, you know what? Uh, I know girls go after like good looking guys because he's in shape and blah blah, but there are nice guys out there who have like a lot to offer, you know, who you know, and and stuff like that little you know nugget there that yeah. you know he hires this actor that's. Bit. He eyes mm -hmm. the It's about his height, same haircut. He's yeah, just like, exactly. See, the girls like me. Yeah, exactly. So, I'm sorry, Elio, if you ever see this. <laughs> no disrespect. <laughs> but, but we I, see what you did. <laughs> but the actor was fantastic. And we know him, as you mentioned, as you guys mentioned, mm -hmm. from Pee Wee's Playhouse. Uh, Pee, Pee, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Yes, Big Adventure. And Teen yeah. Wolf. I loved him in Teen Wolf. He was fantastic yeah. in Teen Wolf. Yeah. And he also yeah. played uh, John. John Wayne Gacy in a in a in a movie. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I see that. Yeah. I'm gonna have yeah. to watch that. But but yeah, this was a fun episode. I thought it was fun. It's it's not one of my go tos from season two. It oh, is one ahead, of the Dave. lowest rated episodes from season two on IMDb. I will I say this though: the mm. ending was weirdly stupid. Like, yeah, why did Clark, Superboy give him back his exactly, potion? The serum, exactly. Yeah. He yeah. gives him back the potion. Like, hey, but good I, luck, but, kid. But you know, Dave, like, I, Dave, I love the callbacks to the old 1960 filmation cartoons when Superboy throws the serum to to uh, Johnny, and mm -hmm. he goes, "I know." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gives him a wink, and you yeah. you fade to to the blue. You know, screen, and it says executive producer Elias so. Oak. <laughs> it's a really like, yeah. decision, though. It's like, so, yeah, I'll give you back this this drug that you've got yeah. that allows you to date rape multiple women at once. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's like really like again. It's it it had that season one like when we talked about the one episode with Superboy, like um, 
what was it? Into the Blue. Or no, no, no. It was uh, the Invisible People that I picked from our worst episodes mm-hmm. uh, from season yeah. one. When Superboy just lets the guy go after he tries to kill <laughs> Lana. Like, mm-hmm. it's like, what are you doing? Like, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. See, Sam, when you said the whole filmation thing, I just keep picturing, like, a writer who's ashamed yeah. of the oh, we- script. Who's yeah. the same to script at home and like well, here and you go like so he was an, he was like dedicating it to filmation and the guy's going like yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah, that's, right. what, that's what I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's sure. exactly what we're gonna do <laughs> but they I mean, did it a couple Drake, times they did it a couple Drake's times that first that season thing, yeah and the second season they did it well they did mm-hmm. it in that in Johnny Casanova so I don't yeah, know. It's I funny kinda... actually, though, with, with the wink, it's funny because that was more of a John Newton thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's the thing, though. Um, there's the problem is there's a lot of plot holes in this because it's like first of all, you you charm people, right? Um, there is that line that I do like though that when he charms the hitman guy and he loses the hitman, he goes like, "No, don't worry about. It. I'll just lie until you got away, got me, you know, and stuff <laughs> like that." And then there's a line follow up going like, "You don't want to wind up like that cab, like the hitman, do you?" Uh, you know, like, you know, basically saying that guy, you know, like got really messed up, you know, died in a horrible, horrible way. Um, yeah, but I just like, I love the moment that even the mob boss for a second almost wants to just let him off and go and play cards, and he's like, no, no, have him killed. And he's like, he, he yeah, somehow like, yeah, it's Clark and the mob boss are the only two that can somehow resist. It's really strange. yeah, but yeah, exactly. And there's also moments where you just go. I mean, he should have gotten out of it before this. I mean, he gets kidnapped, right? It's not like, you know, they, it's not like they tape his mouth for it like that, you know, which would make more sense. Yeah. You know, they drive him to the place. He could have just charmed them to letting him go away before that, you know, and stuff. And then they're holding him in front of the bottom, in front of them. They even say, I just want to play cards with him. And he could have just been like, oh, come on, guys, you guys want to let me go. And stuff, and even with the boss saying "don't do that," they would have just turned on the boss, you know. So unless there's a lot course, of course, unless of course, when he's in the car, they had him; they had knocked him out, mm. and that's why he wasn't yeah. able to charm them. Yeah, yeah. yeah it possibly. seemed almost like, in sci-fi terms, it almost seemed like an airborne sort of thing, like he was exuding some sort of pheromone or something. Mm-hmm. And it was just, I wonder if in the car like he's knocked out he's in the boot of the car it can't spread through otherwise they probably mm-hmm. just pull over at the side of the road and just be like i'm pretty sorry this is so rude of me to put you in the trunk of the car like, do you <laughs> want to come sit up front with me like yeah but it's, yeah. it's funny that he throws him back the potion at the end of the episode because it basically gives him the power that david tennant had in jessica jones which oh, is yeah, fucking yeah. terrifying yeah. terrifying like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, there you go wink yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anything else you want to mention about Johnny Casanova and the case of the secret serum? No. I will say this though, that was the one episode that I was like, this is clearly Florida. This is <laughs> right. so Florida. All the shots, yeah. 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 I was I just kept going like I think Universal Studios is right around the corner because like mm-hmm. it's like probably like a parking lot across the street from it. Like I it wonder- was Mm-hmm. I wonder if the nightclub is the same nightclub that Tracy. Season one. Well, no, no. Tracy and her um, significant other at the time owned a nightclub, so I wonder if that was the nightclub that they would, you know, in the second it season was, go and, like, and hang out. They, yeah, they reused locations a lot, so they probably yeah. would have done. Or it could have been the strip club in the first episode where Lex finds Darla for the first time. Maybe that yeah. could have been. You yeah. know, I don't know. But uh, yeah, Johnny Casanova in the case of the secret serum written by Mr. Salkine himself. It was a interesting yeah. episode. <laughs> it was just fun. At, at the best, it was a it was a fun episode, a harmless yeah. episode. Um, and I'll yeah, tell you what, filler I, episode. I I want to go and have a cigar with that guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you really steal Pee Wee's bike? Like, <laughs> and put it in the Alamo? Is that? <laughs> <laughs> did you ever realize about the gum? You know, like, did you ever realize about that? Yeah. What did it feel like playing basketball with the werewolf? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, anything else before we move on to the next episode? I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to go, and then, Dave, we'll wrap up with you. Okay. So, my episode, at first, I was going to pick uh, Superboy Rest in Peace. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, after thinking about it, no. Because, you know, I kind of like that episode, and I like the character of Serene and her being from the future. And, yeah, it's a blatant ripoff of Terminator. Even but, says like, at the end, I'll be back. I'll be back. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a decent episode. I like it. Like, I, I, I don't like that they ripped off Terminator, but still, I like the idea of somebody from the future coming mm-hmm. into the past and trying to kill Superboy. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a, it's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, the worst episode of season two for me is Revenge from the Deep. <laughs> I did not Ooh. like this episode. It is like a Valentine's Day episode. And yet again, Lana Lang gets possessed by an alien. I shouldn't. Well, it is an alien or creature. So basically, this episode starts out with Lana and Andy at the beach. And well, it, it, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. The teaser basically is you start in the 1960s and you have these two people dancing in this bar so it's this character charlie and this woman that he just meets in the bar very netful shell um 1960s beach yes. party movies yeah. yeah very well and it's shot in bla- black and white in that first scene uh to really set up the 1960s right uh and the dancing like really like i mean the dancing it's very beach boys like mm-hmm. you know, like it was just so weird and then uh this other woman comes walking up on charlie and it's this his significant other uh, another in human form this creature they're both creatures this character charlie and her um ariana nice name i really like that name actually ariana Mm. and charlie but um although his real name is evar Avar, mm-hmm. yes. I was getting to that, Chris. You're jumping ahead <laughs> on me. Sorry. But, uh, spoilers. She comes, she spoilers. Comes, spoilers. I mean, it's the the 30 years uh, deadline to see this episode has elapsed, people. So, <laughs> uh, so Ariana comes walking in and says uh, to Avar, it's time to go. Well, I told you, Ariana, I'm staying here. She's like, no, you're coming with me. So they leave the bar. The woman's just sitting there like, what the hell was that? Like, you know, (laughs) so they go walking onto the beach. Uh, Avar says to her, I'm not going back. And he basically kind of puts her in a little chokehold. Is that? Yeah. Chokehold. Like you can see the space between neck and her. He's not really choking her. Like, but she he's like putting a spell on her, basically. Mm -hmm. So she cannot take human form. So she disappears into this little white, I don't know, like a popcorn kernel. Is that what Mm -hmm. you want to call it? Like popcorn, basically? Coral, yeah. Coral. It's a coral. A coral. Sorry, coral. Shit looks like popcorn to me. (laughs) It's a coral. And he tosses it into the sea. So she's this creature from under the sea. Under the sea. Cue the Little Mermaid music. So he tosses her into the sea. We come back from commercial break we're in present day andy and lana who looks amazing in her bikini sorry sorry stace i had to say it i mean this episode is important for me for (laughs) that reason i think that was the first episode i saw because that episode was the one where as an 11 year old boy i fell in love with this actress you know um because jesus christ because even now yeah. Even now it's going like, oh, now I realize why, you know, mm-hmm. because I remember this episode because I always remember the episode because of the um, Andy uh, with the um, with the metal detector part joke yeah. gag, you know, and stuff. And I always remember, like, why do I remember that stupid gag? Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, now I know because right. she looked gorgeous. Like she looked yeah. gorgeous. Gorgeous is not even the word. Like it's like no, beyond there, there's gorgeous. there's no words to describe the natural beauty that is Stacy Haidu. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, yeah, like, there is he, goddess. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> Thanks, <Chris>. angelic bean, <laughs> angelic bean, celestial <laughs> bean. Okay, Sorry. everybody, wipe wipe your you know brow. Like, let's move on. We're gonna Sorry, move on into the episode. We're good. Oh, hold on. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> um. So yeah, like 
we have Lana and Andy on the beach. Andy's doing his business scheme, trying to get rich quick. Uh, so he ha- grabs the metal detector and he's looking for se- buried gold. Great, Andy. Great. Genius. Uh, <laughs> genius. Yes. Mm-hmm. He's a business genius. Yeah. Almost, almost <laughs> as genius as his, his bit uh, a couple of episodes earlier with the uh, eight track tapes. How's the mask working for you, Andy? And the Superboy t-shirts. I'd buy a Superboy t-shirt, sorry. I, I want one of those Gerard masks. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they were really detailed. Like, he must uh-huh. have a really good look at Superboy's face to make those. Yeah. yeah. Let me I guess, have... you've got five of them. Three. <laughs> <laughs> three. <laughs> Alan, Alan, I have three masks downstairs. Alan was Alan uh made those masks, so. We'll put his information on the bottom of this video. So if you want a mask, go hit up at Alan. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but anyways, like we have Andy looking for Barry Gold. Lana goes off walking into the distance along the sandy beach and finds the coral. I'm not going to say popcorn kernel. Uh, coral. In same the, position, not in the buried same by position, sand. Not buried just by covered sand. under some seaweed, and she finds it and brushes it off. Clark comes walking up. Hey, Lana, what's going on? And uh, basically, the episode takes off from there. Lana goes to bed that night, puts the little thing that she found, the little coral, you know, uh, piece on the side of her bed, and the thing awakes and possesses her body. And the first thing she does is go into the closet and find the worst looking sweatshirt to wear as a dress. Uh, yeah, I didn't really like, okay, great. Yeah. I mean, she looked amazing. Like mm-hmm. 1960s. She like, but like the sense that this creature has like, oh, I got to style it up for from the sixties and look like how, how I looked, you know, 30, mm-hmm. 40 years ago. Like, Okay. Yeah, yeah, I didn't get it. Well, I mean, it's like the creature thinks that humans dress like this and the past right. the humans she has to right. dress this way. You know? Yeah. And then we cut to her like looking all 1960s goddess like in the mm-hmm. hallway of with the big Schuster. bouffant hair to hairdo. <laughs> the big bouffant yeah. hair. Yeah. Uh but yeah, she's in the hallway and we cut to a quick shot of Clark going, Hi Lana. Where you, why are you dressed like that, Lana? And then I love the moment. Like, like where, that's that's a reasonable question to ask a woman. Yeah, like, you, exactly. you don't say that. It's like, what the fuck are you? Like, why are you saying? dressed like that, Lana? Yeah. Do, what, does like, it not look good? <laughs> yeah. It's really rude. Good. Like, why really did you rude to say to someone like, yeah. like what? What are you wearing? Yeah. <laughs> what are you wearing? Like, but like, I He's love not- the moments with Kevin Kiner's score when Clark takes off the glasses and he it actually had a good. Up. He and actually it goes really transformed. Yeah, that was great because he's all he like really a little hunched over, and he—it's very reminiscent of Christopher Reeve in the mm-hmm. the evening with Lois scene in Superman the movie when he's all hunched over like this, and then he stands yeah. more erect. It was great. I love that that little two seconds. He really sells it. I um, guarantee from, that's on purpose as well. So, like. oh yeah, yeah, I think we messed up here. We didn't uh, summarize the episode um, oh, for people who haven't seen it. Basically, yeah. episodes about uh, these two ancient beings from the deep, possibly Atlantis. Oh, Sam did. I kind of did. Go th- he did. He recapped yeah. everything. <laughs> let me, just, let me have my moment, guys. We're getting through the episode. We're getting through. And Lana's smart. possessed by an immortal spirit. There we go. That's all I had to say. You know? A creature from under the sea. Under exactly. The sea. Go ahead. Sorry about okay, that. Okay, whatever. <laughs> so I'm not going to sing the Little Mermaid song. But basically, this is Copyright. a... Uh, yeah. This is yeah, because then Disney will take down the video. <laughs> mm-hmm. Did we just get a copyright from copyright claim from Disney? <laughs> I think you're allowed to do covers, so you should be. I safe. did two seconds of a cover. So, anyways, <laughs> but yeah, this episode basically Lana gets possessed yet again and by a creature or a, um, who can take any form. And like it was basically like Revenge of the Alien or an Alien Solution, mm-hmm. but uh, it's this. Creatures from the sea, so mm. and can, can take I pitch human form. Would, Go ahead. Can I pitch tell. how I would fix this? This episode. Yeah, you know what? Let's we'll Aquaman. do that at the end. We'll do that at it's the Aquaman. end. Yeah. Yeah. It's Aquaman. Yeah, it's yeah. It could be yeah. a, just make a life it form Aquaman. from yeah. from. Uh, yeah, no, it's, just, it's just Mera trying to get Arthur to come back to Atlantis, and he's just like, no. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's all it is. That's that all works. it has to be. 
but yeah, like there's moments that are okay in this episode, but it was just like this is a filler episode, and it's like mm-hmm. a very Valentine's Day like it oh, is. love conquers all like episode, and I you strive know, for the power of love. You know? Yeah, but that's Hugh, this, Huey this Lewis in the news. <laughs> But that's but, this episode's biggest crime. It's just a yeah. nothing episode. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, at one point, Lana's dying because this thing is dying in her. And then mm-hmm. because Superboy is. shakes her <laughs> and like, I won't let you go, Lana. I love that. Like, brings her back. <laughs> like, really? Yeah. Okay, whatever. Yeah. Um, and the other thing that is still mind boggling about the Superboy series, even though I love it, it's my first love from the Superman world, is again... Lana, one minute when she's in Charlie's yacht or boat, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it, when she goes and confronts him, um, one minute she's like, help me. And then the next minute she's she's flipping in and out of consciousness as this creature. Mm-hmm. And she's cognizant of what's happening. Mm-hmm. And she's coming in and out. And mm-hmm. at one point she uses her powers and sends Clark over the edge of the boat into this cardboard cutout looking little like whatever mm-hmm. and he pops out as Superboy, and it's like you sent clark in there with your powers and he comes out as Superboy, and her first line of dialogue to him is like i know everything about you from lana mm-hmm. like wouldn't you be like yeah wait a minute my my I, I, yeah that was my only thing yeah. I, I have to point out though some good about the episode first oh, of go all ahead, Dave. Her act, really, her act for a, such a nothing horrible yeah. script. Her acting was really good, you know, yeah. like very good. Like you could tell she was really coming trying. in and out of the character. She was exactly really, really good. Even, yeah. as oh, yeah. the, even her voice and as and yeah, her, she changed her tone, her posture and yes. stuff. You know, like I thought that was very good. I was very impressed. You know, mm-hmm. for a stupid script, yeah. really well. She, acted, she sold you know? it really well as the uh, Ariana because, like, mm-hmm. one minute she's very. Like, I I don't want to see. Well, she is very monotone. Like, you have to come with me. It's time to go. And then she'd change into Lana and she's like, I'm scared. I don't know what's happening to me. And you could really tell it in the Mm -hmm. the the tone of her voice. Like, I need help. Mm -hmm. But uh, Stacey's infinite credit as well, though. Yeah, she sells it. The worst scripts. She Mm -hmm. she gives it everything that she's got. Well, it's, yeah. it's it's funny because like what Jim Calvert, who plays TJ, who played TJ White in the first season, she always mm-hmm. gives it one hundred and eighty percent, no matter what it is. Mm-hmm. Like, like they were, could, the acts, they were, they were saying she doesn't even have to be on camera; she's still right. giving it one hundred and ten percent. Right? Yeah. She could sell she could sell you a box of cereal just like anything. Yeah. Like it's ridiculous. Yeah. But um, but yeah, to her credit, this really highlighted just what a great actress she is. Mm-hmm. Even with a really terrible script. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you know that, that's the thing, Sam. You know, the best actors and actresses out there, you know, even if they're given the most schlock fest of a script, they can if they they can turn it into gold. I mean, look at Samuel L. Jackson. Snakes on a Plane would not have been <laughs> as good as it was without Samuel L. Jackson. And, uh, and, his, I, and his and his demanding of keeping the, the way the film should have been instead of like selling it out, selling out for like an easy out, you know? Yeah. So, um, that's not always me. work though. Like yeah. Samuel L. Jackson, he, he didn't save the latest saw film. I don't know. I, I which it, I, I, I watched it last week. And he didn't save the spirit. He did not no, save the spirit. I, I don't hate the spirit. It's a very forgettable, nothing movie, but it's, it's so it so much better. better. Very, very, very quick note about the spirit is the first movie I ever saw where I ever thought that Samuel Jackson was not acting well. Like he was not a good actor. Like he was not doing a good performance. And you yeah. can tell that it was because he had no idea what to do with this part. But anyway, that's all I'm going to say about that. But <laughs> Sam, you were saying, is that an episode of uh, Joe Blow coming up? <laughs> I'm just joking. I don't know. <laughs> not, not in my department, folks. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I just and then they're like, I don't know, like in the last scene, I really like the last scene of Superboy and Lana standing there with the, you know, two little corals in Superboy's hand. And he he's like, I'll be back. Very Terminator. Mm-hmm. And then flying off and they just the, so happens there's an American flag. Like, just yeah, off in the distance. I was going to say the same thing. Yeah, you know? I kind of like that. That was a very, you know, 
out of nowhere. That the, I'm like, it just shows okay. that the director at some point thought about how he was going to shoot the thing. Yeah, like, we're, we're uh, everything build... else is just by the numbers. Like that shot <laughs> says the director wanted that shot. Well, it's just so funny because like the whole episode, there's nothing about Americana or nothing about mm-hmm. like you know, it's about two you know creatures finding themselves after you know one kind of discards the other one for a good arranged marriage years. maybe yeah like you know arranged marriage yeah but like um then out of nowhere there's an american flag and superboy's flying past it. <laughs> just like yeah. what yeah. what's it doesn't it doesn't jive with the theme of the episode it's just like yeah. okay it's a great moment don't get me wrong uh it's a very super boy superman moment with the american right. flag but it was just like eh. the moment in metal when he's flying down and they have the american flag behind him perfect yeah it makes awesome. sense mm-hmm. awesome scene because he's addressing uh the crowd and the nation you mm-hmm. know great moment but this was like hey you know what would be yeah. really great in in like the production <laughs> meeting you know it'd be really great we have superboy fly past an american flag for no freaking reason like yeah but yeah i mean the episode it highlights stacy in, in summary um the episode really highlights what Stacy brings to any television show or movie that she's in. She gives it mm-hmm. 110% no matter what. Um, this was just a filler episode, and it's a very Valentine's Day episode, if you ask me. Like, love conquers all no matter what. Like, you could bring somebody back from the brink of death just by shaking them. Like, <laughs> like Lana, I love you. Like, oh, she's back. Like, yeah, great. The bond between them is so strong. Okay, yeah, great. I, um, I didn't mind yeah. the flag being there as well because it, yeah, didn't it was okay. Make, like, I mean, look at Sam Raimi's Spider Man film. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, look it makes sense that... though with Sam Raimi because it's like the time, it, the actual year it actually was filmed and yeah. all like that. For 2001, know? absolutely. But what yeah. about, mm-hmm. like, what about Spider Man 2 and Spider Man 3? <laughs> <laughs> I think by that point they were just like, well, we're we we are committed at this point. I, yeah. you know, I think they just, were just having fun. Yeah. It's like, let's go for it. Well, but uh but my yeah. thing was go I gotta admire Jared for walking on the beach in full pants and socks and shoes because you know that sand that gets everywhere. It's so coarse and yeah. you know, <laughs> I oh, hate you know it. There, okay, there are, Anakin. <laughs> okay, there are two things. Again, we'll go back to the nerdiness of season mm-hmm. two's Clark Kent. Uh, when he goes into the bar looking for Lana or Ariana, mm-hmm. and he's holding the press badge, and he goes, Clark Kent, Schuster, Harold, and he's yeah. shaking. Okay, and then he does the super breath on the guy who's, I'm going to stick you like a, uh, like a pig. Yeah. Like, that's the only thing I remember from the episode, and, and Clark going like this with the super breath and sending everybody into a, a domino, like, yeah. oh my god. And then he tries to pay, and then he tries to pay for the ba- damages with a dollar, right? With a few, uh, all right, he had a bunch of he's like, rolled up singles. Leave. Yeah, yeah. He, but it, it was so funny. He's like, "You're worse than that chick from yesterday." Like, and like the timing of the episode. How long did it take Ariana to walk from the bar to the marina? Like, was it like because Clark says yesterday, and she's walking, and it's still light out. It's like. Yeah, there was no nighttime, like there was no nighttime shots or anything like that. It was just very like mm-hmm. the timing of the episode was you could tell it all happened in one day. <laughs> I was I was always curious about the scene where Lana first walks into the bar and this guy whispers something in her ear yeah. that mm-hmm. apparently is very dirty. I was always going like, what is it extra actually today? What did he actually whisper to her? What's up, hot stuff? <laughs> like like what did he whisper to her? Because I'm just going like, you know, because uh-huh. there's just like there's this um there's this uh, 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 famous <laughs> thing about the movie Something About Mary, where there's a scene where you see Mary in, uh, at the uh, across, then these extras come and talk to her, and the director said something, say something the most dirtiest thing <laughs> you can ever think of, and like when you talk to her, and like they did, and she's just you know totally like brushed it off and stuff, you know, <laughs> but like I was wondering like what did he like what did he whisper? Because if I was the extra, if I was the extra. I would have said something insane to like make her laugh, you know. Yeah. And yeah. stuff. So. Oh, you mean you would have pulled a Michael Mano? <laughs> yeah, I would have pulled a Michael Mano. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. I, I don't know if you guys have seen the show Arrested Development, but there's a scene, oh, yeah. famous scene in that where Buster is just 
letting loose with just a string of swear words as he's just <laughs> ranting on at his mother mo yeah. about his mother and all that. Apparently on set, all he did was just he was just shouting the alphabet. <laughs> 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 I would not have been able to. Like, I would have cracked up on the set just from that because I'd be like, "Is he shouting the alphabet?" Like that would have got me uh -huh. more than if he was shouting he, something purposely he, to make me laugh. Is he pulling a Nicolas Cage and Vampire's Kiss? <laughs> like, what is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> he probably was. Oh. But yeah, it, I mean, and then like Clark running out of the bar, shuffling his feet, was kind of comedic. But like, mm -hmm. yeah, he totally played it over the top. And like, that's what they asked him to do for that second mm -hmm. season. So it's okay. He got he got to do something yeah. different for three and four. Like three Definitely. and four is my favorite Clark. It's just a shame he started off. Yeah. His Superboy was great from day one, but his Clark took him some time to. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I I like that he was finding his Clark yeah. Kent. All the, mm -hmm. all the while. You can even look at it as like Clark trying to form his disguise and he's trying things out to see right. if they work. Maybe yeah. some things he sticks decides he's going to stick with, some some things he abandons, like his bug collection. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's just... Yeah. He's still working out who Clark Kent is going to be. Fair enough. I, I totally agree. I, I can that. explain away yeah. most bad things about yeah. Superboy with just a stupid headcanon reason that's completely just... <laughs> I was yeah. developing my Clark Kent persona. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is what humans are like. Okay. <laughs> um, anything else we want to say about Revenge from the Deep? I don't know. I think we've said it all. <laughs> this, I'm amazed that we got this much out shirt, of it. What shirt, Dave? I hate this episode. No. <laughs> no, my, my shirt says. I hate people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're going to wrap up with Dave's. Worst episode from season two. So, yeah. what was your worst episode, Mr. Dave? and Mrs. Superboy? What? That is. <laughs> Danny O'Neill wrote two episodes of the series, and both episodes I hate. This one is the one I hate the most wow. because I want. I hate this episode <laughs> with a with a passion. You know, I I hate it. I hate it so much because you, it's so just... stupid. It's so stupid. Would Michael, you like it more let, if it wasn't Michael J. Pollard, though? Because I know you don't like his performance as Mixie. I mean, it's not just that. It's just the whole premise of it is stupid. Um, yeah. You know... Uh, that's the point, though. He's not <laughs> good. He's He just makes it worse. He just makes the whole premise worse. Um, the other guy, I forgot his name. He's a Richard very famous... Gill. Richard Gill, Gill James Bond, yeah. you know, yeah. a, a writ, almost became the original uh, Incredible Hulk. Um, Happy he, Gilmore is the guy with the nail in his skull. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, he did the best he could. I mean, like, you know, it's a stupid character, you know, mm -hmm. stupid premise. I guess, like, there's probably somebody out there who watched episodes go, uh, who's going like, uh, who was just pretty much going like, anchor babies are real. This proves it. <laughs> You know, and stuff. <laughs> it's basically, if you don't know the summary, it's basically Mixie shows up again being chased by this bully, uh, uh, a character from this gigantic, stupid Hulk from um, the Fifth Dimension. Um, he basically tells them that in order for, for him to um, escape, uh, a, 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 diamond, uh, a person for the, from the Fifth Dimension cannot be um, killed by another member of the Fifth Dimension if he is adopted by human parents, you know, basically. And so he asked them to pretend to be his parents, you know, in order to do this. <sighs> Not only do they do this. Who, who does he ask to be his parents? Lana and Superboy, you know, sorry. <laughs> it's just, I am so blinded by rage. Um, so Mix, Mix, like Mixy episodes are supposed to be so beyond no. stupid that that's no. why i like these episodes is because they're so stupid no <laughs> no it's no, also no, the no. exact reason you hate them <laughs> no no this is beyond 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 stupid mm. but i'll tell you, you know. what mixie should have been mixie should have mm -hmm. just been basically q from star trek next generation mm. Mm. i mean yeah that's that's pretty much the case i mean that's always why I, that's why i like q from next generation yeah. it's but mixie any, done right <laughs> exactly but anyway, um, suddenly this. So no, that's Gilbert that Gottfried on Superman the Animated Series. <laughs> that is also yeah. Mixie Dunn. That was also really good. Yeah. <laughs> um, but suddenly, not only is that a stupid premise, 
they got to take it the extra step of him having a sleepover with this guy and acting like a child, you know, acting like a child, you know, and in a worst possible way possible, you know. So it, it, I hate it. I hate it so much. I hate it. You know. I mean, he is playing it like a child, and it's it kind of it's, the only the only time it works for me, and I think that's that's what kids do is when he's mm -hmm. like, "Hey, Bill Kabat, check this out." And he's like blowing with the straw into his drink and yeah. making it bubble, and I'm just like, "Yeah." As soon as every kid that I knew when I was growing up discovered they could do that, it was the first thing they showed everyone. But see, here's the thing. I think also, to be fair, I don't like it when adults play children. It 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 unnerves me. You know, like whenever yeah. I see go to a, like an improv show and they try to do an improv scene of them pretending to be children in the kindergarten, it just makes me uncomfortable. I, I hate it. So maybe this was why I did. But it was just bad acting. There was one good joke. There was one good joke. And it's when... Um, what was the character's name that he played? The bad guy? Um, Vilkabak. Vilkabak. When Vilkabak turns Andy into a roach and makes this, stomps his foot and just goes, I'm just kidding. You know, I did laugh at that, you know. Yeah. And also, Vilkabak killed a person in this episode. He turns him into a tomato and throws him at a car which explodes. He, he killed that oh. man. He killed him. Yeah. And I don't care if at the Although end... He, I don't care if at the end Mixie says like, "Oh well, now that we're leaving, everything goes back to normal." Like that doesn't happen. That, no, he killed. That him. is the rule, though. <laughs> that happens in the comics every time. Yes, but the, <laughs> it's the, always the, the, the way. But the, the then that it turns into that broke into a million pieces and covered people in and tomato sauce. I'm sorry, he's dead. <laughs> He's, he's not dead. coming back from that. Yeah. You know? He was at least dead for a couple of hours. Like, yeah. <laughs> just imagine the guy's just dead. He's just in hell for two are hours. You, and he's are you saying he, body. Just like, what the Tom, are you saying he's not quite dead? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're saying he's only mostly dead. Yeah. <laughs> and we know what we have to do with somebody who's mostly dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're right though. Yeah, he murdered that guy. <laughs> they, and and for good measure, they turned the uh the windshield wipers on, so he's all over the windshield. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're not coming back from that. <laughs> so yeah, that that was that was my worst episode. That one I yeah. despise it. Yeah. I mean. uh, I you know the fight. The fight between Vilkabach and Superboy in the living room was it was fun. That was awesome, mm. and the and the punch that makes yeah. helps mm -hmm. that they go and they use uh, in the subsequent seasons in the intro. I love that punch. It was a great yeah. punch. It sends them right through the window. Big Vilkabach going right through a window. Yeah, like, that was great. I will give you this though, Dave. As well, I do like both the Mixy episodes, but they are guilty pleasures. So mm -hmm. I, I I admit that they are objectively terrible. I, I but like I still love them. <laughs> I, I love Mr. and Mrs. Superboy because it's just a fun episode. It was a fun episode. I, I like them the I mean, same reason Bill, I look like. Look at what Johnny Mixie Casanova. did to Andy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, and oh, Andy's the hair reaction. is real. <laughs> I like that moment. The hair is real. Right. That was great. Poor Andy. <laughs> yeah, and then remember what he says. It took the guys at the at the at the salon two hours to style my hair back the right way, and on the way there, two guys tried to pick me up. <laughs> I think it had more than one good joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was it was a fun episode, a harmless episode, and I agree with you, Tom. Like it is, it's those episodes that just everybody loves Michael J. Pollard. Well, we we love him. And like, uh, <laughs> like from Star Trek, from this, like he's just amazing. From Bonnie and Clyde, just a great actor, great character Tango actor. Cash. And Tango I, and I Cash, yeah. The exact same way that I like Johnny Casanova. Yeah, they're, they're objectively terrible episodes, but I, I just really, really enjoy them for some reason. And it, it's really difficult, even just to put my finger on exactly why. Mm -hmm. But it's like we've been saying all along. It's very Silver Age. It's very like. Yeah. You know, like we're having fun with the Superman, Superboy character, and that's what they did with these episodes. It's very hard to do 26 quality episodes, especially back then. Today, like we're seeing with Superman and Lois, you have 13, 14 episodes and you can just. 
Yeah, Dave's like, I don't care. <laughs> I, I, I hate that show. I, I really I'm sorry. I, I, I like I, it. I hate that so. show. I'm loving it. Though. I so, think yeah. it's, it's that kid. But, but uh <laughs> but yeah, it was very, very hard to do 26 quality episodes. And the ones that they did, they knocked out of the park because like look at like all the different versions of Superman since then have pilfered from Superboy in some form or fashion. So yeah. They must have been doing something right. So yeah. Yeah. But uh if, if only Lois and Clark had like pinched the flying team. Because mm, yeah. it's it's amazing. I watched the making of season one of Lois and Clark again. And yeah. it annoys me every time when they're like, we had to work out how to make a yeah. guy fly for television. It hadn't really well, been done. It's like, and fuck they you. got away from it. <laughs> like in seasons three mm-hmm. and four, let me throw my cape at the. <laughs> that's it. Simulate. So play. lazy. There you go. So, no, that, yeah. That's lazier than like, at least George Reeves like dived out a window. Yeah. <laughs> but anything else we want to say about Mr. and Mrs. Superboy? I love Michael J. Pollier as Mixie. Mixes Pitalik, say that three times fast. He's great. I thought he was fantastic. He looked like the character stepped right out of the pages of the comic, especially yeah. from the 50s and 60s. He looked amazing. Still to this day, he is the, one of the... Like I mean, we could we could say Gilbert Gottfried's <laughs> voice as Mixie on the animated series is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but again, like great great character actor. Can't say enough about Michael J. Pollard. Uh, I met him years ago, back in 2010 at Wizard World in Anaheim. Uh, Ilya and him were at a con- convention with Aaron Smolinski, Baby Clark from Superman the movie. Met all three of them. Can't say enough about all three. But Michael J. Pollard, when I went over to talk to him, I had an 8x10 uh, photo of him as Mixie. And his agent looked at me, looked at the photo, and said, how do you remember the, him as this character? I go, well, I was six years old. This was the first Superman thing I ever saw. And they and Michael J. Pollard lit up and said, wow, I have not seen any photos or anything like this from when I was on the show. And he I'll remembered what, it. Though. He remembered it, and he 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 talked to me about it and loved it. Loved the and, loved playing the character. So, yeah. And it's it doesn't even necessarily have to be your first Superman show because technically right. my first Superman was Dean Kane. But I'll tell you what, I don't think of Harry Mandel when I think of Mixie. <laughs> yeah, no. I was I will say yeah. this though: the second actor to play Mixie on the Supergirl show did a really actually pretty decent job. Thomas like Lennon, that. yeah. Yes, he was, he was yeah. good. I hope he comes back for Superman yeah. and Lois. Like, it'd be pretty good to have him yeah. on the show. Doesn't seem like they're trying to connect the shows, though. So I don't know. Yeah, but we'll see. You don't know what they'll do for season two, though. Mm, let's see. Forty pounds of pressure. So that's all we're gonna say about Mister and Mrs. Superboy before we wrap up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, Dave. Not Dave's cup of tea, but again, you know, that's why we do these reviews so we could get everybody's perspective on Superboy the series. It's, but, it's good that we don't just agree on everything. Yeah, though. that would yeah. be so. That would be, be so boring. But yeah. Be- before we wrap up, I want to do a little uh, plug for a fellow podcaster, Anthony, with uh, Digging for Kryptonite. Let me bring up his little promo that he sent us. We're going to be cross-promoting different podcasts, and they're going to be plugging us as well. So we're going to create a really cool super network of podcasts moving forward. We're going to have Anthony on. We're going to have Joe Stuber from Comic Book Central on. In the very near future, he's done amazing interviews. Anthony did an amazing interview with Mark Wade just recently. You could go check that out on all different. He's on all major podcasting platforms. So go look for Digging for Kryptonite. Uh, Let me just share his little plug real quick. And uh, we'll be right back. Hey, Superboy the Legacy fans. This is Anthony Desiato, host of Digging for Kryptonite. Digging for Kryptonite examines Superman across time and media. We recently charted the evolution of the origin story, and we're currently in the midst of a deep dive into the pre-crisis iterations of the character. Guests have included comic book artist V. Ken Marion, as well as Birthright and Kingdom Come writer Mark Wade. Listen on all major podcast platforms or watch on the Anthony Desiato YouTube channel. Thanks, and I hope you enjoy so thanks, Anthony, for that promo. I cut a promo for Digging for Kryptonite. That should be up very soon on his podcast. So uh, I think I sent it to you, Dave. You you liked it. So Great, great promo. Tom, I sent it to you, too. Yeah, I, um, I, I listened to it. It was good. Yeah, we're going to be yeah. doing a lot of promotion. 
I've been looking into affiliations with different uh, super related websites. So it's going to be a lot of fun moving forward. And cool. yeah. Uh, anything else you guys want to plug before we get out of here? No. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, I, I have uh, some projects I'm working on um, my own personal channel. Um, specifically, I'm going to be covering the CW shows um, where I'm talking about um, the death of the Arrowverse uh, uh, trilogy in my experience. My first episode eventually will be the the um, the uh, uh, the train wreck of Batwoman, um, yeah. followed by <gasps> fo- followed by um, followed by the, uh, the the tragedy of Supergirl. Um, and possibly another whippy uh, one about the Flash. So we'll see. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'll be I'll be covering that. And I'm also working on a new show that I hope um, will be well. My own personal channel called Escape from Toonsville. And of course, you can always catch Gum of Not Forgotten every three weeks at JoeBlow.com and Joe Blow Mo- uh, YouTube channel. Cool. Yeah, and like I mentioned earlier, go back and check out episode one of Gone uh, but Not Forgotten. It's Superboy. It, Jesse did a really great job with the voiceover. Mm-hmm. Um, Dave, you with the writing on it, fantastic series. Go check it out. My my favorite Superboy, Quantum Leap, Terminator, the one you guys did with Terminator, fantastic. Go check Sequest, it out. Sequest, yeah. Sequest, yeah. Go check it out. Uh, JoeBlow.com. Uh, Tom, anything you want to plug before nope. we get out of here? Well, uh, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna do a plug for Tom. Go check out on Superboy Legacy, the YouTube channel all the remastering stuff that Tom and Aaron have been doing uh, with Superboy, the series. Uh, you got to get the Mindscape clips up. Man. I got to get the ma- Mindscape. You've one. had them Warner- for two weeks. <laughs> War- yeah. Warner's, it, Warner's has been uh, a pain in the butt, but hopefully yeah. I got to dispute it with them. But yeah, uh, that is probably one of the best clips of the rem- remastering that you've done so far. It's just really, really d- well done. Uh, Chris, anything you want to plug before you get out of here? Anything? Uh- yeah. Nothing that I've actually no, done. No, no, no. Plug the comic book that your character. Yeah. Okay. So um, there's there's a uh, indie an indie publisher. Um, they're called a G Man Comics. Okay. And a few months back, they did a uh, Kickstarter to do their most recent issue, which is coming out soon. Uh, and the Kickstarter was to get your own character put in it, and. I got my I got a character in this. So let me just flip to the page. What's what's your character, just real quick? What was the it, character? So what what we're looking for when we open when we get the book, so we know what character. It's Omni Man. Omni Man. Mm. What's his power? <laughs> As you can probably tell, he's a Superman. He's cool. a Superman. Omni Man from Invincible? No, 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 no. I, I, ha- I have had this character since, <laughs> since 1992, back when I was in high school. Okay, mm-hmm. and I've been refining him and working on him over the years. And this was the perfect opportunity to get him published mm-hmm. in some form. So the most recent issue, which is number uh, three, which I got, I guess, I guess advanced copies of, uh, because they haven't actually gone up on the Indie Planet website. There he is in action. Um, if you go to Indie Planet and look up G-Man Comics, uh, you're going to look for Simon N. Kirby, the agent, number three, and that's where you'll find Omni-Man in action. Cool. So Sweet. do you know how much they are on there or no? Uh, I believe it's like four ninety nine. Okay. To order it from Indie Planet, I believe. I, I, you know, Because they don't have a price listed on the book itself. So I can't really say. Okay. And it has the so the and the link hasn't actually been put up for everyone else to see it, but uh it is co- forthcoming uh and it should be there fairly soon. So cool. if you go to Indie Planet to get your Indie Plant Indie Comic fix of uh Indie Indie uh, creators, look for G-Man Comics and Simon N Kirby the Agent number 3. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Chris. That's awesome. That's so awesome. So um, we're going to wrap up this episode. Guys, I want to thank you guys for being on with Dave, Tom, Chris, a.k.a. Team Superboy. Thanks for being on this episode. Um, 
Go follow our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Superboy Legacy. To not miss anything Superboy related, go to our website, superboylegacy.com. Reminder, we're going to get back to doing live streams on YouTube, Facebook Live, Periscope, and Twitch. And all podcast uh, episodes are going to be available on, well, they're already available, on Apple iTunes, Spotify, and Overcast, or aka any major podcasting platform. So thank you, and you know what? Same super time, same super channel. Dave, what do we say? Throw that S. Throw the S, baby. (laughs) Throw the S. (laughs) Throw the S. Keep throwing the S, everybody. Okay, see you later. See you guys.